the summary that uh, that one should have around technology is it's the biggest velocity of change that that financial services has have seen it's in the social media where you saw the proliferation of users the ability to interact and the ease of in interaction but i think is there's slightly something more to be said about the consumer so who is this consumer who's now so keen that's interacting on the on the um, on the social media networks and dealing on, on his or her mobile phone. I think firstly, a couple of, of interesting stats. 63% of them don't have credit cards, yet they represent 27% of world population. 33% believe they won't need a bank in five years' time. I think about 33% believe they don't need a car in five years' time too. 50% are counting on tech startups to overhaul banks. and then in terms of, of the uh, use of cash, which is a very interesting one, only half of them think they're going to use cash on a, on a weekly basis. So if you think of the repercussions of the, which this has on financial services, you are working with a, a very quickly changed uh, clientele. What are their biggest fears? In, in, in my grandmother's case, fears was that she wouldn't have food or, 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 or money to coming out of depression. Nowadays, our biggest fears are those three. Yet, if you think of the, of the millennial, they've actually gone backwards in terms of their wealth. So what does that mean? It means, for example, that they become much more auto-directed as far as investments concerned. They depend far less on the state to look after them from a wealth perspective. Um, and I guess they are working with this, with this whole concept that they need better bang for buck. They need a fairer system, whether it's in the way that, that we express it from a regulatory point of view, call it a uh, treat your customer fairly, or whether through the fact that a, a model such as discovery on a shared values basis where people want to feel that there is an exchange and, a, and some sort of proportionate benefit coming through their behavior or through the products that they buy. This is part of, of the new millennial that you see in wanting that philosoph philosophical exchange that, that's, that's, that needs to be achieved. They don't trust financial services. If you see, look at the trust barometer. So it means that from, from who you, you're working with, they, they don't really see you as a, as a partner in their, in their own journey to, to, uh, to financial well-being. And I guess the other one that's a very interesting uh, concept for, for me is this whole sense of community. And how does that amplify itself in financial services? I think in this country, we, we all used to the old mutuals, uh, SUPOL, uh, FBOB, well, Mutual and Sunlum were both mutuals not long ago, 20 years ago. And if you think of the largest life insurance companies in the world, they are still mutuals, i.e. owned by the members. So the profits go back to the members in some shape and form. And PPS is one example in South Africa. Um, and I think what, what one sees in that is that the, whether you end up with a better risk, i.e. if you were in an insurance pool with your mountain bike buddies, he would probably feel firstly more in charge of the risk, or more at least he would know the risk better. He would put social and other pressure on his, on his friends not to claim or live healthier lives. And would want and, and would want would be incentivized to actually get the benefits of that risk pool. Now, if you you think of a, whether it's a stock fell type of association, or or a mutual, or any club that you have where you feel that you're more in charge of the risk that that you subscribe to, or the or the underlying profit that comes out of it, this sense of community is a very strong one. And if you if you think that it doesn't really make sense, just open your WhatsApp and tell me how many average groups you have on your WhatsApp. Whether this is a mountain biking club, lawyers from Brackpan, very small group, um, or whatever the, the case is. So this is something that I think we're gonna see lots more, more of in, in future. Turning to um, some of the, call it the demographic shifts. If you wanna be in financial services, you better prepare yourself for, the, for Asia. Uh, both in terms of number of people, that's just a graph on, graph on, on wealth. But the 10th largest uh, bank in the world, and financial, 
only started uh, four years ago. So if you're, gonna, if you, if you're interested in, in banking and, and, and what's been happening, for example, in China, you would be amazed to, to see that you, would, you, you find it very hard to buy a coffee for cash in, in, in Shanghai. You even find it hard to pay for the coffee with a credit card. All they want is the, is the mobile device, which has become the, the, almost the primary type of, of, um, of uh, 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 exchange for, for, for products and goods. That means that in that case, for example, the banks have almost been disintermediated because it's all about the Alipay and the Tencent Pay, et cetera. 